Hello there, and thank you for tuning in to Town Meeting TV. My name is Bobby Lucier. I'm here today. I'm joined by a longtime Burlington resident and, in fact, Burlington legend, Don McDonald, CCTV legend as well. Don, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thanks a lot. Yeah. Uh, How's it going, Don? How you, how you feeling? Feeling pretty good. Okay. Better than I was a few months ago. But, okay, uh, there you go. You know, I'm pretty, pretty right, you know, for... It's good. The weather's getting better. It's getting to be baseball weather. It's getting, getting to, be. to be baseball season. I love it. Yeah, I know. And today we're going to talk about the history of transportation in Vermont. Yeah. And we've got a lot to get through here. There's a, a long history of, of buses just a, as one topic of that. And, and so maybe, Don, I'll ask you uh, first how, you, how you're connected to this issue. How do you... Well, I used to be on the Burlington Police Department. And... Um, Naturally, you have accidents, stuff like this, and you have incidents that come up. And um, the uh, we've known the bus drivers for a long time. You know, it's just mutual type of thing. And uh, I also like public transportation, railroads, stuff like that. Um, in uh, a couple of years ago, we started with the idea of uh, a book on transportation in, in uh, specifically Burlington because uh, basically that's where we all live. Mm -hmm. But um, <clears throat> we started to research it uh, in the, uh, the Vermont uh, Transit at the time was the major uh, transportation unit. The state had a lot of lanes. It basically fanned out from Burlington and Rutland and White River Junction and uh, went into many areas of New England, uh, New York, that area, New York City. Um, the, the motto of the company of Vermont Transit was uh, the people will be served, and it's a pretty uh, good idea. And uh, they've had, the company was established in the streetcar days, um, and uh, went from there, um, basically the same route system that you have within the city of Burlington now. When was it founded, Vermont Transit? Uh, 1929. Okay. 19, and what did, what did transit look like before that? Basically, um, you started off in the 1870s with horse-drawn vehicles. And were any of those public, or was that? Yeah, that they was were all like... public. We could see, the coach could seat 14 uh, passengers. Uh, they ran on a root system, which is pretty similar today. Uh, in other words, they had a line that went out North Avenue first to the cemetery, and then they extended it out to um, Ethan Allen Park. Or were the roads <laughs> paved at that point? Or no. Was it? no. Well, look, it paved. Uh, material that was used in Burlington, they used to use uh, stones. They used to spread them. Uh, they didn't have pavement back then. We're talking the 1870s. That mm -hmm. wasn't developed until about 19, 1900s, early 1900s. Mm -hmm. um, now they, this was the horses were a new, a new idea, a fresh mm -hmm. idea again. You know? And uh, the line, like I was saying, out to North Avenue, eventually went as far as Ethan Allen Park. Mm -hmm. And then they had a line, the main, the first line that went in was from Union Station, which is down, uh, at the time it, it was down at College Street and uh, Lake Street, <clears throat> and ran over to Main Street, and then um, up Main to Church, Church over to um, Winooski Avenue, out here over to the bridge and into Winooski. And uh, that was the first, that was their first line, more or less. And then they uh, started a line off of Main Street down to down uh, 
I had to go Pine Street, you know. It went down Pine Street, and uh, it, it created kind of a loop. They put in a loop along Union Street, and they had uh, sort of a one-way setup when things got crowded, either outbound or inbound. So they had a loop. It's kind of a strange setup when you look at it today, but mm -hmm. eh, it worked. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, how did how did buses make their way to? Uh, the that's Vermont? yeah, that's a big story. Bill Appleyard, who owned in the latter part of the twenties, uh, <clears throat> bought uh, a bus line that ran out to. He ran. He owned the streetcars. See, he bought the streetcars, and <laughs> see, so he owned that. And but there was, he was oh, he was a dealer, car dealer. He had a, a Apple Yard Motors. He was, a, he was located on South um, Winooski Avenue across the street from what is the uh, fire station now. Mm -hmm. That's when they started building a lot, a lot of municipal stuff, mm -hmm. like the library and schools. And all the, the mayor of the day was named, they used to call him. Uh, uh, the builder, whatever. Well, I forget what his last name was. Kind of rhyme. <clears throat> anyway, he went on uh, and uh, had bought out the streetcar business. Now he had to buy um, one bus a year. Uh, what do you call? It? Um, anyway, they had quite a few buses that he had to buy. That's the reason why he bought it, the bus company, the tro tro trolley car company, mm -hmm. uh, because that was starting to, you know, need some repairs or rebuild or whatever they're going to do. And he bought them out. And that gave him the opportunity to introduce uh, buses, you know, first Grand Brothers and then Dodge. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, the streetcars, were there tracks? Yep. On the, okay. And so those were... One track per street. The other, the Church Street had two tracks. Uh, let's see, another area, well, Union Street down to, uh, yeah, they had two tracks, I think. I'm not sure they were okay. doubled up, but they doubled up in the period of day. There'd be times when they'd be running uh, train, shall we say, down Pine Street and then up. Union Street, or vice versa, you know. Right. And um, the line from up Main Street came up to uh, Church and ran up Church Street, nor um, you know, up Church Street, and uh, went for one block on Pearl Street, and then uh, over to Winooski on Winooski Avenue, all the way around uh, to the bridge. Uh, and Winooski, and then eventually up to, it was a couple of extensions, it ran to the main, main and, and uh, Main Street in Winooski, and uh, Allen Street, at Allen Street, yeah. And, uh, and then it went across to the train station there, that was a extension that went to the train station. <clears throat> and then um, there was another line that went out at the second line uh, that was an extension of the Winooski line that ran out to the fort. Fort Ethan Allen was there and it was big. These are all streetcar lines. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so when buses came along, did they have to remove the rails or were the rails still there? And then the they weren't, they did. Yeah. Because uh, there were some. They were, and this was at a time in the Depression when. Um, you know, they ended up pulling up most of the rails. Um, that wasn't, the city didn't demand that, but that's what they did, what happened to the rails. Because, you know, you now have rubber tires on steel wheels and they don't match. Mm -hmm. So uh, they, uh, they would, you know, run on rails. And uh, when they switched over, they didn't, it was like almost like line to line. It was. It would have a reason to pull up the tracks because they were extending a line further, or 
um, they won. And then <clears throat> 1929 was when they decided to uh, change over to buses, six strictly buses, because they couldn't run inner city uh, with trolley cars. It just wasn't didn't have the population, you know. Right. Um, and so uh, it would be 1929 period. And so these and, were privately, Bill Appleyard, this is a private business that yep, he started yep. these buses with? And yeah. was there, were the streetcars also privately owned? It was a, yeah. it was a private business? Yeah, too? they didn't have municipal. Well, <clears throat> they ran, Bill Appleyard uh, was, was a good owner. And uh, he took care of his people. There's no records of anybody being fired. It was, I think that made me one. Um, but yeah, he uh, he talked to his tons of bus drivers. And just, uh, actually, the number of guys he used to work for the um, for um, uh, the Vermont tra uh, Transit uh, were almost to a guy that I talked to that they lo they loved the company. That, this was bus. This was both when I was on the police department. Mm -hmm. And um, doing research for the book and everything. Mm -hmm. It was, um, uh, yeah, I can't find a guy that had a bad word to say about them. So and that's how, a, being on the police department, that's, right. a, that's a tough, that's a, you know, a yeah. stretch, but yeah. it's the way it is. How long was the company around Vermont Transit? Uh, until, let's see. It, this is touchy because you got to split the two. Um, yeah, the the, the uh, you put the line on something called the Yellow Bus Company, which operated out of Barry, hmm. and um, <clears throat> it was a guy named Jewett that <clears throat> owned it, and that was the first bus that Vermont Transit bought, and. Uh, that's when they switched over. You could see the handwriting on the wall. It, you know, uh, it it was just coming. Um, and the uh, trolley cars, the street cars, you had a lot of little things that you don't think about. And they were in the um, this book right here. Um, what book is that? that that's the uh, uh, Vermont Transit. Bus book, the people will be served. It's uh, uh, Sylvia Allen. Uh, Sylvia Allen, right? Yeah, Sylvia, yeah. And uh, she put this. I know we don't have the book, but maybe if you can hold I, up the, I have a, the, the cover of it. Yeah, kind of start um, to see sure. It looks like. <laughs> and my finger again. Nice, there you go. Um, so it's called The People Will Be Served. It, when was it written? Oh, that was a slogan. Sl a slogan. Okay. Used. Right. And uh, yeah, the uh, it was that was all, all, all the buses had the, the, the people will be served on them. That was there. Mm -hmm. This guy's a salesman and a half. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's he's tons of good in all kinds of areas, but Bill Appleyard is. Yeah. Yeah. He ain't no Walter Boy, really. <laughs> He, um, he, yeah. How long? What, how long was Bill the the owner of yeah, he, he Vermont Transit? He died prematurely. Um, he, uh, I guess, that was a heart attack. Mm. Probably, he was out in Texas at the time, and um, at his funeral, this is another interesting point. There were four bus drivers in their uniforms that were clock carrying the casket, and the bus drivers were all. You know, wow. spiffed up. What do you remember roughly when he passed away? It'd be in the forties, I think. Forties. <laughs> yeah, I think it was in the forties. I'm not. I'm not real sure on but that. But the company continued. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Was it? You had everybody in line. Yeah. <clears throat> you, you got guys like Charlie Irish. You got all these people that are in front office positions. Mm -hmm. They all were licensed to drive. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's cool. Um, it, the, the, the front office was kind of, it was different. It, it, it was different in a good way. Mm -hmm. The, the, the uh, altru you know, they were altruistic. They were, um, 
Yeah, everybody pulled together. It's like on the same hour, you know, really, they were. And that's why I would like to, this idea of trying to get back Vermont Transit. You now we've gone through a heck of a 10 years or 15, whatever it's been now with the COVID and everything else. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I got ideas and I'd like to really see it go as a state agency. Mm -hmm. I don't, the old private company, Greyhound. Was, so yeah, so tell us about that. So how did Vermont Transit end up you know, what, what was well, its fate in yeah, the end? Okay, his, um, he had a son and a daughter, Bill Appleyard. Yeah. And he had um, a lot of workers that were close to him, you know. And uh, when he died, it was suddenly. <laughs> and uh, then uh, his son, I think, had informed him beforehand that he didn't really want to run the bus company. Uh, and they had a travel service. He kind of leaned towards that. As a matter of fact, I think there's still, I think this travel service may still be going. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I haven't really paid attention to that. Um, but yeah, he, uh, this was quite an outfit. They were quite, quite a, he spread it to his kids. And, and then the decision was even made. They didn't want to stay with the bus end of it. It was, you know, you always think about the weather. I mean, you're in one of the most hostile places in the country as uh -huh. far as weather goes. And, uh, you know, it just, uh, I get, you know, there's, uh, there's you're kind of guessing around. Um, Charlie Irish, I knew, I knew somewhat, see, I didn't want to get too close to uh, because of my job with the police department, you know, and uh, so I, I, you know, I, you know, but I, there was, uh, my thinking was it was kind of like a little bit of a fence there, you know. Between who? Between me and the, yeah. and the drivers. And what was the role of Charlie, who was Charlie Irish? He was, um, <clears throat> boy, what was it? Yeah, he was basically the, very quiet, very, um, Business-like, uh, uh, he, he the, the, the whole system was set up with that type of personality. And so he was yeah. one of the one of the executives yeah. of the of Vermont Transit. Yeah. The executives there weren't the funny outfit. They, the headquarters was down here on um, St. Paul Street. Mm -hmm. They owned the hotel. Huntington Hotel, I think, and everything was in there. And the buses lined up out front. The town, the city buses lined up um, on St. Paul Street. And the out of town buses lined up on Main Street. But you, if, if you're the poor guy that's loading the baggage, baggage and John Shero, he's a good guy. And uh, he, uh, he was a guy that was, um, young kid grew up, uh, I think he's from Shelburne, and uh, he worked for, he's still, so he's retired now, but he sits on the board at uh, CCTA last, I know, uh, I'm not sure, but yeah. Right. And so, but, but when did Vermont Transit actually cease to exist, or was it purchased, or was it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's a tough one. Anyway. Yeah, uh, I think about 1975. I'm gonna go on here. Uh, 80s. They were still. They still had ski buses. Oh uh, wait a minute, Dallas, Texas. Oh, Jack Dwyer Court. Jack Dwyer fired himself over the strike. Um, when, when was March this? There was a strike. 19, 19, 1990. Jack Dwyer was forced to fire four drivers. It'd be 2nd of March, 1990. Jack Dwyer by this time was in charge. What was the strike about? <sighs> Greyhound. 
Greyhound. Say more about Where? that. Yeah, this is a huge, this is what did him in. Okay. William Thompson, Bobby Thompson's son, informed his dad that he didn't want any, didn't, he wasn't interested in operating Vermont Transit. This oh. is in 1975. Um, Graham, after a discussion with Charlie Irish, Bob Thompson, and others, a decision was made to sell Vermont Transit lines to Greyhound Corporation. This okay. would be in 1975. Okay. Greyhound CEO at the time, Jim Kerrigan, was a bus man and friend of uh, Bob Thompson. Um, and Vermont Transit at this time was operated at a separate entity on the Greyhound Corporation holding company. Um, yeah, it, it, uh, the inner city component. See, the thing is, there isn't. There isn't the, the management team that made this thing so special. Got old. Mm -hmm. Basically, I wouldn't say that. That's not right. Um, but uh, yeah, Charlie Irish was named CEO, and they got John Teats. He came in 1982. Replace Jim Kerrigan. So there's this generation of leaders in pub, in locally owned public transit, right? And and once that was they, they built the whole thing. They built the whole thing, and then Greyhound comes in and buys. Glad I found this piece of paper because <laughs> um, this stuff happened fast. This is all during the strike. Mm -hmm. um, there's a guy named John Teets, who was the CEO of Greyhound Corporation, replacing Joe Gatta. Okay, and uh, Kerrigan was from the armor meat side, and they were meat packers out in Wisconsin or something. Uh, the Greyhound Corporation, anybody, you know, whatever. <coughs> Make a mess, a deregulation. Okay, here it goes. Ch changes in, on the horizon. Federal deregulation of inner city bus industry took place. Many new low-cost bus operations, you know, mega bus, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was in the 80s? Huh, yeah. Um, yeah, John Teach was a Greyhound CEO, demands wage cuts from drivers <laughs> in an effort to bring Greyhound wages closer to trailways, because trailways is kind of a discount set up at the time. And uh, and was this Charlie despite? Irish retired? Yeah, here he goes. Okay. And then Jack Dwyer takes over as president and CEO of Vermont Transit. Several new routes opened up. Uh, yeah, here you go. Oh yeah, eleven eighty three. First strike in Greyhound history. Last forty nine days. Heavy impact of, on v VTL interlining. Uh, unavailable. You couldn't, you couldn't airline. That's what they had to do when you got the bomb in you. Uh, customers stay away, fearing project. This is gets really bad as I remember it. Where, where, where did you get this account? Uh, this is in the in the in the um, in the book. In, in, no, uh, some of it is, but most of it is from the library. All of their boxes, Billy took them up there and donated them to. The Fletcher Library? Right here. No, the UVM Library. Oh. <clears throat> no, no, take that back. Historical, historical li library in Barry. That's. Uh, oh, okay. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, it's uh, where the old this? Spalding High School. So you're reading from a timeline here. Who wrote yeah. this timeline? The timeline was, <laughs> was a guy from Barry. I met him two okay. times. Okay. So I did For some reason, I didn't want to go back and do all this. I don't think I had the. Uh, the equipment, I, yeah, I don't know. But the, okay, now this particular entry is fairly long. Now William Thompson, Robert Thompson's son, informed his dad. Yeah, that's, that I already read most of that. So Don, we're going to have to we're Roll running it. out of time yeah, here. But <laughs> so so the the impact. It sounds like the Vermont Transit founded by 
uh, Bill Appleyard a generation of local owners is then taken over by national Large corporations national and then that brings about some yeah. strikes and they're looking Meat to cut packers. wages for drivers. And so to bring us up to today, uh, you know, Green Mountain Transit is, is the uh, entity that serves us I, our bus lines bus. right now and yeah. what would you like to see you know happen in terms of busing? I, really I think um, I know a lot of the drivers and I know a lot of the front office and uh, um, I think they're doing a pretty good job uh, you know the drivers are great um, you know you have a lot of uh, people from other countries that live here, you know, so they get different languages, mm -hmm. and that can work. That that works good, but I think generally, good maybe not. Um, You'd like to see? Would you like to see busing be publicly owned or a new a new entity? To, to yeah, it's a kind of a setup where <laughs> now, and, and and I say, you know, Bill Appleyard and everybody else was. Anybody in the private sector that I know is pretty good. Mm -hmm. But also know that you get these privately run ones, and they're not Greyhound. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's not. So I, I, I don't know. I guess I'm saying I'd like to see public, but you know, if you could bring. Uh, <laughs> um, if we could bring Vermont Transit back, and once we had that model, and we stuck with that model, because you see, you, you get the Apple Yards and the, and the Charlie, you get all of those guys. Mm -hmm. And run these these guys are coming through the line, the, the drivers, and they get into management, and da 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 da. And uh, that's basically what I like to see, but. I mean, okay, this, this bus line came on board, uh, didn't come on board uh, all of a slam. <clears throat> you had main routes going down Route 7 to Rutland and Bennington and over to Albany and New York City and so on. <clears throat> you had um, runs going down the other way, like to Boston from Burlington down to Montpelier Barry, down, down Route 14. And in Hampshire, you got Concord and all of that. Uh, you go across from uh, St. Johnsbury over Route 2, basically, mm -hmm. um, all the way over to uh, in New Hampshire down to Portland, Maine. You go to Quebec, Quebec City, Montreal, little towns in between, mm -hmm. you know. Um, funny enough, uh, I... I would have to do some research, but uh, I, they never really went over to Plattsburgh all that much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because they left it to the ferry, I guess. I don't mm -hmm. know. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> what else? Yeah, the Albany, you, you, in New England, New York, New Jersey. Um, yeah, uh, be, yeah. And this was extremely popular because you had a lot of people that were going to the college. Every town you went to out of college, you got Middlebury, you mm -hmm. got Norwich, you got Montpelier, Barry, you got St. Johnsbury Academy, you know. Mm -hmm. All, every town you went in, you had a college, which mm -hmm. is what they're looking for. Right, yeah. And uh, yeah. I, don't, I don't know, it's just... Well, it is, and I can get to the, I can get to this point where I've done what one well, or two pages. Well, that might have to be on our next episode, yeah, Don. No, we're know, we're out of time, but it was really nice to chat with you today. Yeah, it's, 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 I mean, you, you got you got a lot of history up in, in your. Well, can, uh, the baseball is really something. And we didn't even get to talk about baseball today, so that'll that'll be on the next episode. It's a, too, that's a separate show too. Exactly. Nice. You well, get, you know, you you start with the, and I got this habit that's in ingrained somewhere, I don't know, that you just start on some, whoa, yeah, that year, I remember that year, 19. Oh, yeah, we'll do a lot of that. We'll, yeah. do, we'll do a lot of that in the next show. So thank you so much for Thanks coming in, Don. Appreciate yeah. it. And thank you for tuning in to Town Meeting TV. Stay tuned for many more programs and local history, transportation, and much, much more. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank everybody. <laughs>